Hello friends, today we will be discussing about dyscalculia. I am Dr. Suresh Badadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. In this video, I will be discussing about dyscalculia, what are the signs and symptoms, assessment and management of dyscalculia. Dyscalculia is a part of specific learning disorder. Then understand what is SLD. Specific learning disorder is an umbrella term for group of neurodevelopmental disorders that are typically diagnosed in early childhood. But however, in developing countries, it is very difficult to identify at the childhood because the resources are very less. Hence, invariably it will be recognized in the adulthood. They are characterized by persistent impairment. That means a pervasive impairment should be there. And they can be difficulty in reading, writing, arithmetic, or mixture. The dyscalculia falls into arithmetic difficulties. And as you know, ICD 11 and DSM 5 has a three categories that is dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. The specific learning disorder in which the normal pattern of skills acquisition are disturbed from the early stage of development, that is, brain development. Dyscalculia is a term referring to a wide range of difficulties with mathematics, including weakness in understanding the meaning of numbers and difficulty in applying mathematical principle to solve the problems. Let's go, go deeper into this dyscalculia. Dyscalculia is a mathematical learning disability that impairs an individual ability to learn number related concepts, perform accurate mathematical calculation, reasoning, and problem solving and performing basic mathematical skills. The numbers, it can be considered as number dyslexia also. Also, numbers dysgraphia. It is bigger than just a mathematical mistakes. It is a repeated consistent problem which occurs in calculation. It is difficult to understand the wider concept of numbers or else rules and regulations which play a role in arithmetics. Let's look into the signs and symptoms of dyscalculia. Difficulty in counting backwards, difficulty in remembering the basic facts of arithmetics, slow to perform calculation, weak mental arithmetic skills, taking large time to solve the problem, unable to understand the mathematical signs, symbols, getting confused between the symbols, unable to understand the concept of multiplication, division, and the Mistake between these symbols. Poor sense of numbers and estimation. Unable to compare between the numbers. The numbers and also the size of the numbers. Similarities, they find it very difficulties. Mathematical concept is a huge task for them. Difficulty in understanding the value of numbers between numbers. And also addition is often a default operation in these children struggles to understand the information on charts and graph. That means if you give or present a chart, such as pie chart, maybe bar diagram, they find it very difficult to decode them. They are unable to understand the value and sense that is depicted on the graph. Difficulty in learning and understand the mathematical reasoning. That means they have a problem in logically understanding the mathematical concepts unable to generalize the arithmetic skills in real life. You can teach them 2 plus 2 is 4. When you give them two apples in one hand, another two apples on the other hand, ask them to count. They find it very, very difficult to generalize that what they have learned 2 plus 2 as 4. Difficulty in understanding the numbers and also the quantities in real life. That means generalization of the skills do not occur. High level of mathematics anxiety can be seen. Struggle to recognize the pattern like the smallest to largest or else tallest to shortest. They find it very difficult to understand how the trend is there, whether it is increasing, decreasing or fluctuating course, they find it very difficult to understand. Let's look into this diagram. Here, if you look at that, there is a confusion with regard to mathematical symbols and signs. They are weakness in visuospatial skills, difficulty in understanding and reading the clock, frequent reversal of units such as 
43. Sometimes they will read it as 34 or they will write it 34 instead of writing 43. They have find it very difficult to difficulty in sequential direction. Trouble in dealing with exchange of money. Poor memory of numbers and facts. And also find it difficult to decode timetable. Learning musical concept will be very difficult. And also the facts, formulas and traditional method of learning with regard to dyscalculia will be very difficult for them. They get easily disoriented between left and right. The difficulty in understanding the map. Let's understand the various differential diagnosis with regard to dyscalculia. Brain damage, cerebral palsy, certain neurological degenerative disorders, fragile X syndrome, premature birth, low birth weight, antenatal problems with the child, undetected impairment of sight and hearing, low intelligence, inadequate schooling, access to school is very problematic, having comorbid mental health condition also play a role. Let's look into the prevalence. 3 to 7 percent in children and adolescents suffer from dyscalculia. In India, the number translates to 1 to 2 crore population having this arithmetic problem. Both genders are equally affected in dyscalculia. In dyscalculia also, they display a high comorbidity with, with dyslexia. That means dysgraphia, dyslexia and dyscalculia go hand in hand. What is the impact of this? A large scale court study in England revealed that poor mathematical ability is associated with major psychosocial and economic risks. 70 to 90 percent of the affected person ended premature school by the age of 16. That means school dropout is very high in UK with regard to children who had arithmetic problems. At age 30, they find very difficulty in getting employment. They may not be employed full time at all. That is the biggest problem. The probability of developing a depression was twice high, high for that person without having dyscalculia. That means dyscalculia will result in unemployment, not able to get the job. At the same time, they may not be able to lead a normal life. They will be suffering from depression, suicidal ideas, death by suicide is common. The cost which has been calculated with regard to mathematical ability, dysfunction in Great Britain is approximately 2.4 billion pounds per year. We have not calculated with regard to dyscalculia in India. We have sheer number of 2 to 3 crore and finding the impact is very difficult at this point of time. Let's look into the assessment of dyscalculia. Dyscalculia has first and the foremost we need to do a good history taking, clinical examination and assessment. First and the foremost, know the reason for referral. Get the referral letter. Do a thorough detailed evaluation. History taking, past history, personal history, temperamental history, family history and psychosocial stressors need to be documented. Do a thorough physical examination. Look for differential diagnosis and comorbidity. Remember, in SLD, comorbidity is the rule. Hence, you need to identify those comorbidity and treat them. And now we need to do mathematical testing. It may be informal or formal. For informal, you can ask the family members to get the exam related or test material which they have done. Answer sheets can be seen through and ask how the child is performing and look whether it is below the 2 standard deviation or 1.5 standard deviation. Mathematical performance below the average performance in mathematics must be documented, particularly in basic arithmetic operation and numerical and quantitative processing should be documented. A strict threshold has been placed nowadays in various schools and also with regard to laws. 1.5 standard deviation below the age or grade appropriate means the child has dyscalculia. That means the child needs accommodation, modification and remedial measures. What are those intervention first and the foremost massive awareness campaign need to be done in the society and also to the parents and teacher early identification and referral is important school based intervention extra class special class parenting parent support 
psychosocial support to the child, emotional support to the child, use of digital technology, calculators during the exam should be allowed to the child suffering from this. Games based remedial measures, watch for the comorbidity and treat them, extra time, extra calcula calculator should be given to the child, exemption from math exams can be considered. And we need to implement national education policy which has been recently drafted and, and have been circulated. That national education policy plays a crucial role here. What are the future directions? First and the foremost, health insurance need to cover SLD. No health insurance may be public or private should not reject the child suffering from specific learning disorder. Because Mental Health Care Act of 2017 clearly says that health insurance should not be discriminated with physical health whenever the child is suffering from one or the other mental illness. SLD is a mental illness also considered as a neurodevelopmental disorder. We need to develop a quality standardized test across the language and also we need to do adoption or a cultural adaptability to be done so that the assessment can be done easily. Evidence-based learning program need to be implemented. Long-term prospective and outcome studies should be done. And national education policy need to be implemented in the true spirit. To conclude, my dear friends, person with dyscalculia perform poorly in all areas of our mathematics and it is a persistent pervasive. It may be counting, computing, processing of numbers and qualities or quantities, generalization of math concept and comparing and so forth will be a mammoth task for the child. Early identification, and intervention should be the goal. Recognize the comorbid condition and treat them. Accommodation, modification and remedial measures should be considered as per the Right to Persons with Disability Act of 2016. Don't discriminate the child. Don't stigmatize the child. The problem is in the brain, not in the child. The brain which has a neurodevelopmental problem presents with specific learning disorder. Please understand this. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.